hello to all my friends in the internet world. This is your friend Jay Silva, also known as Bacara Jay. I want to bring you a very special video because in this video I'm going to share with you one important testimony from one of the students of Panacea who made, you know, who has made the transition onto a sniper TKO. Why this is so important? Because Mike from Florida, you know, he had some issues while making the transition. I'm going to explain a little bit after the video. Okay? But what I can I can tell I can you know I can perceive out of his video testimony is the honesty and and the truthfulness of what he has to say. All right. So check this out. This is very important. You know, at the end after the video, I'm gonna make commentaries. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how it started in this crazy world of gambling or this crazy casino world. And you know, I will do a little Q and A. People who have sent me, you know, send us questions, and and I will point you, you know, to the right direction. If you're a student who already made a transition, or if you're interested in, in in joining any of our programs, all right. So please, don't go nowhere. Just pay attention to the video and listen to what Mike has to say. Good evening, Jay. I wanted to start out by saying that Jay Silva has changed my life forever. By taking a leap of faith and paying for the Panacea Tico system, he taught me how to make a living and provide for my family when I decided to retire from my daily job. That's going to be sooner than later now that this is working unbelievably. I did not expect to make this video, but after seeing Jay's last video he was asking for them, uh, I decided to make it. Uh, these testimonials are sometimes a little skeptical when you listen to them online. You never know who's telling the truth and who's not. Uh, the difference with my video is I can't win anything with Jay. Um, I already won the scholarship. Uh, this is just a thank you to Jay. Um, it makes me ineligible to win anything because I won the scholarship, but um, I don't care. I already won the lottery when I learned Panacea TKO. Um, honestly, I was almost ready to give up on gambling, and uh, Jay put out his Christmas Baccarat TKO video, uh, the free one that showed us how to make a path to winning. Um, didn't win as much as I had wanted to, but uh, I definitely stopped losing and had a lot of questions. I knew that getting Jay on my side was what I needed to do ASAP. Uh, I bought a system and got the training. Uh, because I had seen the free video, teaching it made the panacea even easier to learn and understand. Uh, the one thing I will tell you about Jay, if you've never met him, uh, he's as nice in, you know, in the teachings as he is on the videos. He really takes time to help you. Uh, when I first started, I had a few questions outside of the lessons, and he answered everything. Um, you know, never really had a problem. Um, emailed him, did some chatting, things like that. Just very easy to talk to. Anyways, I was doing very well with the Panacea and thought I would not need Sniper, but I uh, was always been intrigued about it. But uh, again, I was doing pretty well, so you know, I didn't really want to put out the money right away. Um, but when he put out his Father's Day special, I knew it was time to go get it. Um, I had learned a little, you know, through some of his uh, trainings and, you know, knew there was a little bit more bankroll involved. Um, but I figured that um, even if I didn't use it now and had to wait to get my bankroll a little bigger, you know, I knew I'd have it when I was ready. Well, let me tell you guys, it is genius, as Jay says, genius. Um it's all I play now, and won't we'll play this style forever, you know, unless I get the the two player system. But uh, that's probably a little bit down the line. Um, I don't want to make this very long, but here's my honest take on all of Jay's systems. Um, I really didn't have too long to play with the Baccarat TKO, mostly using it in practice and a few times at the casino. But it was really good, and like I said, it taught me pretty much how to stop losing a lot of money. It didn't really teach me how to win a lot because I didn't take the full training. But some people figured it out more than I did, and they've been winning pretty well with it, from what I understand. Um, if you only have a small bankroll, then a good starting point was Panacea. Um, when originally what intrigued me with Panacea was you only needed you know, 20 units a session and 40 units for a whole bankroll. So you know, starting out new and had been losing my butt at this for a long time, I just figured, man, this would be perfect. Um, and it really has been. It's been a phenomenal system. I mean, it's when I say system, it's you know, systems are, are tough to. Um, um, I don't want to call it a system because systems are pretty much just rigid ways of playing. And with J systems, it adapts. You're you're actually adapting to what's going on in the shoe. You're not just playing some mechanical system. 
you know, for the most part. And it's just a genius way to look at everything, you know. And, and, and the thing about the Panacea is, you know, I, I always came out ahead, um, you know, whether it was one unit, 10 units, 20 units. You know, my, my daily goal was 20 units or whatever, you know, denomination I was playing as my base bet. But, um, you know, sometimes it's not always easy to win. Uh, there are going to be some hard shoes here and there. But generally with it, the, with this uh, training, you don't uh, really lose too many sessions. And I can honestly say I've never lost a session. Uh, you know, sometimes I'll win, you know, five, ten, you know, units and then get the heck out because, you know, it's just really a tough day. But um, I only live 20 minutes from the casino. So for me, I can go any day, every day. And, you know, I just go the next day. And sure enough, you always seem to win, you know, more than you lose for sure. And uh, it's kind of here, listen, you know, listen to me, poor guy, win 10 units as a bad day. You know, at 25 bucks a hand, that's $250 on a bad day. When I say day, that's only like two, three shoes. And I just want to get out because I just feel it's not going my way. I'm still up $250. Most people can't say that for, you know, a couple, three hours worth of work. Anyways, a bad day before was, you know, I'd lose $1,000 or more and, you know, just be pissed off at myself for a week until I decide I want to go back and get kicked in my butt again. Anyways, you know, Sniper is uh, what I'm playing now, and it's just a way to make crazy money is really the difference. Um, you know, it's a little bit different in the play style, but you're not really going to have to have too big of a learning curve with it. Um, you know, it's just, just adjusting the game to, you know, what you already know, but Jay's got a few extra tools that he puts in to really just make that bankroll just grow so fast. It actually gives you a lot more room to make, um, you know, make your own decisions and, and and, and play the way you want to play, you know, within the, within a set of rules, of course. But anyways, I don't want to give too much away about it. But, um, you know, the, the biggest thing is, is that if you really want to make a lot of money and you never want to have to worry about money again, then Sniper is definitely the way to go. Um, you know, I don't know if this is the kind of testimony you wanted, Jay, but it's the honest truth. Um, Sniper is the, the, the way to go if you really want to make this your lifelong goal of winning. Um, but if you want to, you know, just have a small bankroll and you want to get started and you just, you know, been losing and losing and losing and want to get your feet wet, then get Panacea. Give it a try. And, you know, Jay always work with you to, to bump you up to Sniper down the line. But um, if you can at all buy Sniper right away, then that's definitely the way to go. Well, anyways, again, don't want to keep this too long. But, again, Jay, you changed my family's life and I'll be forever grateful. Uh, even though we've only talked on the phone, I will always call you friend. And maybe we'll get a chance to meet someday. Take care of all who's listening to this and have a good night. Thank you so much, Mike, from Florida for your testimony. I like it. It's honest. You know, you can you can tell that, you know, it came from the heart. And one thing, you know, you, you can still apply. You know, you can still be chosen uh, to be the winner. You know, you, you, if, if uh, we pick your video testimony to be the, the most powerful testimony out there you can still receive the prize and and i know you didn't you didn't think that you were you know illegible but you know surprise now before i move on and, and tell you a little bit more about what i'm going to share with you tonight um i want to i want to clear two points about mike's uh video mike's testimony first of all mike he was always a very inquisitive student i mean in the beginning i noticed that you know he was when, when he started training in Panacea, he was asking a lot of questions. And I'm not saying that in a bad way or, you know, out of negativity. No, I like it. I encourage all my students to ask a lot of questions. Okay? Most people hate to ask questions. And, and I know they're not going to be able to learn this whole thing in two weeks or three weeks. So, you know, I encourage all of you guys and girls to ask questions, all right? Why? Because we have answers for you. And another principle, another point that I want to uh, make sure that I clear is that when Mike made the transition between Panacea and a Sniper, he wasn't doing that good with a Sniper. So when he contacted me on Facebook, you know, via chat, he, he told me, AJ, I'm going back to Panacea, and he wants to join Roulette, TKO because he won a prize so he has um, he has that program there waiting for him so he told me hey Jay you know I tried sniper it was okay it didn't do it for me 
Panacea was working just fine, so I'm going back to Panacea. That, that triggered my curiosity because, you know, this is the first time someone has ever said anything remotely close to, to, to that. So I said, uh, Mike, let's talk for a few minutes. So I, I believe we spoke for no more than 15 minutes. I show him a few pointers and I ask him to email me his losing frequencies or his problem frequencies. And he did. I started reviewing them. I, I got to be honest, I've been very busy. So I was waiting for, for his feedback, of how he was doing after I gave him, you know, those, those final touch-ups to, to the transition from Panacea to Sniper. And, and then he sent me uh, an email containing this, this, um, this video testimony. He said, hey, AJ, you were right. Now that I, that I fix my game, everything is back to normal. Like you said, you know, everything is peachy. Everything is working just fine. So I like that. Uh, that is honest. All right? Now, so thank you, Mike, once again. I really appreciate it. I know you did your best. And the best thing is you, you, you thought you were not doing it for a chance to win the, the, the bankroll of $2,500. All right? Now, to all the people out there, especially my students, you know, it is important for us to understand the casinos are using technology against us. The casinos are already aware of what we do or the way we play. And basically, they altering certain patterns in the shuffling machine <clears throat> in order to make it harder for us to beat it. And panacea is an amazing technique, but panacea, you know, just, uh, you know, it's, it's they making it hard for us to get, you know, for us to get to our PPM. And to my students, you know, PPM is planned profit margin, or pure profit margin, whichever way you choose to call it. Now, uh, that on one hand. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm using this video. You're looking at this video. This video is not mine. I found it on the internet. It's from a guy, you know, who, who travels. And he went to Vegas, and I like it. I like the, the video. It's, it's, you know, it's real. It's a, it's, a, it's a real casino scenery, okay? Look at the people out there. Regular people, okay? Regular Jane and Joe going to the casino. But you know what? That has sparked an idea in my head. And, and, and I noticed this principle for many, many years, decades. It's like the, the people who walk around the casino, they have no clue. I mean, 99.9%. Not, that, that was the group here saying, you cannot film any, any table game, so move along. 99%, 99.9% nine .9 of all the people who are inside the casino at this very moment, they have no clue what they're doing. All right? Now, I'm going to tell, tell you real quick the story how I became a professional player. Uh, it was back in 85, 86. I was... A little over 19 years old, all right. <clears throat> Obviously, I had a fake ID. <laughs> I hope the 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 the, popo, the cops are not listening to this. Uh, I hope the, the the police are not paying attention. Anyway, that was 30 years ago, all right. 30 something years ago. Um, I was part of a clique of four kids. You know, we we're all Latinos in New York. Uh, we were always getting in trouble. Nothing too bad. You know, normal kids thing. Um, I was all by myself, okay, I didn't, I didn't have, you know, my, my entire family is back home in South America, and, um, you know, I love to make money. Uh, at that time, I convinced my friends, you know, my clique, to put all our money together, go to Pennsylvania, to Philadelphia, you know, we go to Philly, buy, you know, used cars in good shape. Bring them back. Back then, it was a boom. Back then, you know, it was like flipping houses in the 90s and the 2000s. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll pick up a car, three, four grand, bring it back to New York, fix it a little, maybe put a stereo. Back then, you know, the, <laughs> the Bensi box the <laughs> were hot, were hot items. You know, just remove the, the radio, the removable radio, because thieves will have a field day with your radio. And everyone knew that, you know, you, most, most drivers would leave the radio underneath the, the seat. So anyhow, um, 
we were flipping cards and we were making a couple of hundred, you know, a couple of extra hundred dollars a week here and there. And, you know, and we were growing, you know, slowly but steady like that. And we were approached by an outfit of people that we knew through one of our guys. One of my, you know, this, these three kids were Colombian. I wasn't. So basically these guys, they approach us and they said, hey guys, would you like to make some money? So, hey, you know, we were, that, that was our main, our main goal, you know, just to get paid. So obviously, you know, we said, sure, what's up? <laughs> we all ears. So basically that's, you know, that's the point when they told us that we got to go to Atlantic City, New Jersey. To the, to the casino strip, we're going to meet so-and-so guys, you know, gamblers. It was all, you know, it was all males, no females. Uh, and they were going to teach us how to play blackjack. And that's how my career started. And, but what I'm trying to say, what I'm, what I'm trying to share with you guys and girls, and I'm planning to write my memoirs. A lot of people say, Jay, man, do you have the most amazing stories? Please put them all together, put them in a book. And you know what? I, I believe I'm going to do that soon within the next two years all right i'm not planning to do this very long so you know before i i call it quits i'm gonna put out my book there and, and you know so check it out so before i ever put money and and the beauty of this thing it wasn't even my money it was it was this outfit's money that these guys were in control to hold for a period of time and they had this amazing idea. If we, if we train these kids how to play and how to turn this money into more money, into bigger money, we'd be doing all right. And, and it, you know, it worked. It worked. It was a great feeling. You know, they knew we were stand-up guys, even though we were very young. Okay, I, I remember back in the day, my, my favorite casino was uh, Mer Griffin Resorts. I loved the, the, the clam chowder and the, and the seafood at the cafe there. And I remember uh, the waitresses, the wait staff, giving me a very hard time because my name back then was in background J was Kid. <laughs> Everyone called me Kid because I looked like a kid. And, and they would give me a hard time to serve me alcohol because I used to love to drink, you know, um, vodka and orange juice. I thought it was like a refreshing beverage <laughs> before I knew it. I was, I was pretty drunk. So anyhow, that's how I started playing. That's how I learned how to play blackjack at a professional level. I knew how, when we were all trained, all four of us, we were trained how to count cards. But you know what? And then, then I discovered a principle that if we work together, instead of like working individually, if we work together, it was a steadier, safer uh, profit, profit margin. And, and we needed a runner. A runner was the guy, you know, one of us, the, the guy with the least talent, and I remember Shorty, the guy with the least talent, you know, he would be the one who would take our tips and back then you know we didn't have that crazy computer thing that we have today so we had a perfect running mechanism and and no we were not counting cards to me counting cards doesn't work okay it's pointless especially nowadays listen to me guys and girls there's no money on on blackjack and i know this this guy out there who's using the tko blackjack tko has nothing to do with us Okay, so please don't get fooled by these people. Okay, so I, 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 I make use of the opportunity to clarify that point. Blackjack TKO has nothing to do with us. It's just a guy trying to make some money. All right? Using our name. So check this out. But this brings me to the point, okay, that uh, it's an amazing story how I moved from, from, uh, from Blackjack onto Roulette. And then, you know, <laughs> I remember... You know, when we were playing roulette, we were very close to the, to the, crab, the crab tables. And, and, and for some reason, crab players love to make noise, loud noises. And the tables get very rouchy. And, and you know, we're like, whoa, man, people are having fun over there. So, in one of my, <laughs> I call them my craziest days, or my craziest years, I became a, a professional crab table. And no, I wasn't doing the Iron, the iron Cross or anything like that. I was just playing the odds and being safe. It's all, you know, I like, I like craft. If you, you know, it's a complicated game. That's like, I don't train anyone. It takes years to learn, you know, the, 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 the professional way. But, you know, I have fun and I make some dough. So check this out. 
And then, you know, I, I became a, a background player because I, I, I saw the light, I saw the truth. And it was because of what? I was infatuated with a girl, you know, uh, an Asian, <laughs> the people, my, my friends used to call her the Asian princess. And she was very cute and she was very young, but she was always playing background and she was always doing good. And, and I learned, and the only reason that I, that, that I learned was because she wouldn't give me the time of day Okay, and I want you know a good-looking kid. I was strong, but she wouldn't you know she wouldn't <laughs> she wouldn't give me the time of the day until I start asking questions about background. And then you know she had that thing about like oh you're interested in background. I will teach you. So she started talking to me, and not only that, but I felt obligated to have something to share with her because so far it was only one-way training. She was the one doing all the teaching, so I wanted to incorporate you know a few ideas in how to make. You know, the game better because her game was pretty good. A little risque, but, you know, pretty good. <clears throat> I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't play the way that she used to play. And then she went back home. You know, she was from uh, one of the Asian countries. I've, I completely, for my life, I don't remember where she was from. I think she might be Malaysian or something, but she was the cutest thing. Okay? And I no, I never got around <laughs> to to get anything serious with her. She were just friends or back her associates. All right? So anyhow, check this out. Now what I'm trying to tell you guys and what I'm trying to share with you guys and girls is, hey, we share, you know, we, we have unique stories, okay? Unique stories. What do I mean by this? Not a lot of people have been formally trained before they go into a casino or before they start, you know, they start getting serious about playing a game. Now, a lot of people leave comments in my in my in my social media in the YouTube uh, videos. Some of them I allow. Some of them they just you know obscene. They start cursing a lot, and and you know we remove those. It's to me it's, it's disrespectful to all the people who just want to watch a video and learn something. Because I always try to share something with you guys. But check this out. Some people say, hey, don't listen to Jay. You know, that guy's just full of it. He, he just wants your money. I said, no. I actually enjoy giving people a fighting chance to better the game and to have, you know, a, like I said, to increase the odds of beating the casino. Casino don't like me because of that. I have met casino people. I have met casino owners, and they they know who I am. They well, they they, they don't know me as Backer J. Backer J is only four and a half years old, I think, four years. But they know me, you know, a skit. So now the cats are the back, you know. People say, "Oh, this guy." Well, they, you know, some people have contact me. It's like, "It's the same voice." I said, "Yeah, I have a unique voice." I don't know. I sound very young. I'm 52 years old. So check this out. Imagine when I was 19 or 20, 23, you know, I sounded like a teenager. So check this out. <clears throat> so I said, hey, I know how to play the game. When it comes to background, I know how to play. Okay? So when people, people contact me and say, hey, Jay, can you teach me how to play? Sure I can. Now, am I going to teach you every single thing that I know in two weeks? Hell no. Why? It's not because I'm not willing to do so. It's because it will be impossible. All right? Now check this out. I'm going to make a comparison. I'm going to make a point on comparison between the game of Bakra and the Rubik Cube. All right? So check this out. I'm, I'm, I want you to pay very close attention to what I'm about to share with you guys and girls, all right? So please don't go nowhere. I know it's kind of a lengthy video, but you're going to enjoy it, all right? Check this out. So here we go, guys and girls. We have a Rubik's Cube in front of us. Why is this so important? I came across a Rubik's Cube in the, decade, in, the, in the 80s, in the decade of the 80s, before I actually moved to New York, and immediately I became fascinated by it. Um, throughout my whole life, I like to keep one ruby cube, you know, in my office, in my desk, you know, for those moments in which, it's not that I have nothing to do, or I'm, all, I'm always super busy, but those moments that I need to make decisions and everything, you know, the first thing that I do, I pull out my ruby cube and I start messing with it. 
you know, I start like <laughs> doing some patterns and, you know, one face, two face, and then, you know, put it, put it back together. So now check this out. I like what this guy, this guy is on YouTube. I took this, this video courtesy of him. Um, and I like what he does. Basically what, you know, what he does, he breaks the, the, the Ruby cube into layers and then he breaks it into elements. And then, you know, basically, literally he breaks it apart. And then he's showing you the core of the cube. And if, 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 you know, if you have trained with us, you realize that's exactly what we did with the game of background. Okay? We, we teach you that when you play in the game of background, you should always, you should always and only make banker player bets. Stay away from any stupid side bet. Why? Because of those are short losses. Like I told you in the beginning, the worst thing that can happen to a gambler is to win once. The moment that you get lucky one time, they got you hooked. They got you by the shirt and curlies. Why? Because you're gonna try to, <laughs> you're gonna try to emulate that win, and and you're gonna exhaust your bankroll trying to get it. All right. So those are stupid side bets. Treat the game of background as you know its true nature, pure binary system. So let me ask you a question. You're looking at this guy, young kid, putting the Ruby cube together. Can you question that he knows how to put it together? No, you have proof there. That's exactly what I've been doing in my, in my YouTube videos. I go into a casino and I play live the game in front of you guys and girls. And even then people question, hey, uh, those videos are pre-recorded. No, they, they calling my name every time that I win. And they adding the, the chips to my account the moment that I win, or they, they, they deduct in the, the chips the moment that I lose. I cannot manipulate that. All right? So check this out. But that's the nature of the beast. The, the world is hooked on, on, you know, on an illusion. The world hates the truth, and, and they love bullshit. Okay? So check this out. What we have here, what we have for you, is a know-how. Okay? We break the game of background into elements, and we teach you these elements, and we teach you the mechanics, the proper mechanics for you to do at every particular moment. Why, Jay? Because at one point, you're going to go to the casino. Here we go. So the moment that you sit down at the table, you see all these elements in front of you. You see the spots, the lines, the banker bets, the numbers. Look at the dealer. She's paying, she's paying out the side bets. You guys don't understand. Side bets is what keep the casino in business. Why? Because they are impossible to win. Some people say, Jay, man, you're full of it. Man, I, I, I play the side. I bet the tie. And I bet the, the, the winner seven. And I win constantly. No, you don't. When people contact me and they say, Jay, you know, I have a good system. I say, why are you calling me if you have a good system? Oh, because, you know, most of the time that I lose, I said, well, how, <laughs> how can that be a good system if most of the time you're losing? So check this out, guys and girls. No bull. When you contact us and you ask me the question, hey, Jay, do you know how to play the game of Baccarat? My answer is yes. I can play the game of Baccarat at, a, at an elite level. Very few people around the planet know how to play the way we play. And I, I say we because, you know, it's not only me. I have a team of players that play very similar to what I play. And all my students, whether they're Panacea, whether they're Sniper, whether they're Sniper Squadron for two, we teach them how to play the way we play. So if you ask me, AJ, hey, can you teach me how to play the game of background? Yes. But remember, you will need discipline. You will need commitment. And if you're willing to, to, to put all those elements together, you will have consistency. Like in the, in the, in the video testimonial, you know, uh, Mike from Florida told us, hey, I realize I'm winning more than I'm losing. And that's keeping me on profits. That's all you want out of the game. You don't want to break the bank. You don't want to break the casino. That's stupid. You're going to get banned from ever coming back. 
So this is my video testimonial I share with you guys and girls, you know, the story of Baccarat J. So thank you so much, and I will see you very soon. Bye-bye.